to be involved in this. It's great. It's great to see so many people training. Uh, and uh, I never thought I'd actually enjoy uh, ergometer training. I never thought I'd enjoy getting together with other people and doing this. Um, so you've been doing a lot of sessions at some very quite intense sessions. Uh, so what I hope to do with this session is to kind of it's a it's a kind of a it's a threshold intensity session, so it's quite hard, but it's not really hard. Uh, the idea is that you can do um, you can do the three pieces. So set out at a pace for the first piece that you're going to be able to maintain through three pieces. They will be hard, but you've got three minutes to recover in between. But the idea is that you don't go into oxygen debt, you don't produce lactate, so the uh, the training effect is is good for building your endurance. Uh, what I'd like to focus on, having watched some of the other guys, um, is, is, is to try and focus a little bit on, on technique because for all of you out there who are rowers, boat rowers rather than machine rowers, it's really important that you remember during lockdown all of the, you know, the, 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 the finesse of rowing and what that is and how important your technique is. Uh, so I thought we'd maybe use this as a concentration, as an exercise in, um, in rhythm and maintaining the connection with the foot plate, which is really important in terms of how the boat moves. I saw Neville mentioned before, uh, before his session about the, the position at the finish and your elbows been down. And what happens is uh, the, the bow of the boat goes into the water and it slows it down. So the weight is on your ass. So it's important to keep your your connection with the foot stretcher. Uh, and so we'll, I'll talk through that in our warm up, just about how important that is, that at all times our feet don't come away from the stretcher. And that keeps us over our feet, keeps the weight centered in the boat and it doesn't slow it down. Um, so we might just do a bit of a, a, bit of a warm up. Um, so we just some very easy rowing. And I'll just talk about a few points that I'd like to get across. As we're, as we're going. So there's no, no exercises or anything, just a, route, a, a rate of 18 or 20, just nice, easy rowing to loosen out the body. And we'll talk about some of, the, some of the technical points that we'd like to work on. Okay, so if you want to just set your clocks there for 10 minutes, and we just do an easy 10 minute warm up row. And off you go. And of course. Okay. So it's important when we come up for the catch that we're nice and loose, our shoulders are nice and loose, and that the connection is good between the leg drive and the shoulders. There's no shoulder movement, just hooking on and hanging on with your arms while your legs pick up the weight. That's an easy connection to lose when you spend a lot of time on the rowing machine. We tend to use our shoulders a bit too much. So the picking up of the weight should be with the large muscles in the legs. And what that allows is when there's good connection, nice, easy rowing back, it gives you nice rhythm. So you can accelerate and then let the boat glide underneath you. 
as you come up for the next one. So push and glide. So nice and relaxed, going forward on the sled, arms loose. Shoulders relaxed and picking it up with the legs. And now for about, for about a minute, just roll using only half your slide, but making sure that when you do it, your feet are still connected to the foot plate at all times. That your feet don't come away. Okay, half slide. And the same connection, you feel the connection with your legs, not your arms and upper body. Nice and relaxed. And now begin to stretch out again to full slide. Gradually. Now, in order to maintain the connection with the foot plate, we have to keep the handle moving. Go around the turn. We keep the handle moving. And we gather ourselves just, be just beyond the knees. That's the balance point. Right there. Right there. And the acceleration is gradual through the stroke. Nice and loose. You keep the hands moving when the ball comes into the body and away. If you pause at the finish, you're going to be your feet are going to come away from the stretcher, and it's going to be more difficult gliding forward. So keep the hands moving around at the finish, out past the, past the knees. Keep the weight on the feet. And we just go back to half slide again for about 20 strokes. Half slide. 
Just watching that connection now, making sure it's with the legs. Hanging on with the body and arms. And stretch out again now the full slide. So on this row race, it should be loads of time going forward to relax on the recovery. That's a lovely rhythm. And that's what you bring into the pieces when we start to do them. Looking for that rhythm. You just keep the hands moving around the turn and glide forward and glide. That's it. Just checking our feet, making sure they're connected with the stretcher all the time. Okay, and wind up. That's great. You should be nice and loose. Anybody wants to get a drink now is the time. Okay, so if you're gonna set your clock for 12 minutes work and uh, three minute rest. Ah, uh, here. Okay, can everyone hear me? I can't see anybody there.
Yeah, everybody can hear you. All right, grand. Okay. You? All right, guys. So three Brian, minutes. Brendan, just to put in there that the rest time is three minutes, guys. One of the lads just asked there. So three minutes rest yeah. between each piece. Yeah, three minutes. So it's 20, uh, 20, 24, 26, 28, 30. Sorry, 20, 24, 26, 28. 20, 22, 24, 26. I can't have it written down. You know what it is there. 20, 22, 24, 26. 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, two minutes, and one minute. And look for the rhythm. So get into your rhythm early and look for that connection at the beginning and keeping your feet planted on the foot plate. Okay? Get ready? And go. Ray 20. Now, nice and loose on the rhythm. Get your rhythm early and hold it. Push and run. Nice rhythm, nice and loose. Plenty of time for gliding forward and staying relaxed. Make sure we don't pause at the finish. Keep the handle moving around the finish. Now pass the knees. That's it. Nice and loose. Now we're coming up to 22. So we're just going to change the rhythm slightly. Get the rhythm early and change. Twenty-two. Still nice and relaxed. Acceleration and glide.
We're making sure our shoulders and arms are nice and relaxed at the front, at the beginning of the stroke. Nice rhythm. Feeling the connection with the legs. We're going to be moving up to 24. The same rhythm. Just give it a little bit of a squeeze to get the race. Change. Remember, it's all about rhythm. Get your right early and holding on to it. That's it, nice rhythm. And we're moving around the turn at the finish. That's nice. Nice rhythm and nice and relaxed. Two shoulders. that rhythm as we begin to get ready to go to 26. Change twenty six. A 
That's it, nice rhythm. Connection with the foot play. Noise rhythm. That's it, noise. Get ready for the last change. Get the rhythm. Change. Nice rhythm. Hold your room. Come on down, hold on, keep it moving, very loose. <laughs> the first piece is usually a little bit of a shock, especially if it gets to the, the higher rate. You just try and concentrate on that, that rhythm. And that we don't like to end up getting stuck on our backsides at the finish, that the handle turns and we follow the handle forward for the next one. Even those shoulders. Nice and loose. Now opening up your lungs and plenty of air in. These pieces are designed to build, to build our endurance, but the rates are low enough that we can really get a sense of rhythm. 
of what it is that makes the boat walk underneath it. Particularly when the oars are out of the water, they're nice and loose, weight over our feet, and just gliding forward. Every bit of us relaxed and loose, even in our faces, nice and relaxed. Coming up now for the next piece. Great and 20, nice and relaxed, and change. Now we've loads of time on these slow rates to think about what we're doing. Picking it up with our legs, nice and loose in the upper body. Connect at all times through the foot stretcher. That's nice. And glide forward. Push and glide. And glide. That's it. Nice and loose. Nice rhythm. Upper bodies nice and strong against the leg drive as we kick it up. Just hold it, hold against the handle and accelerate as we get through the stroke. Accelerate, accelerate, and glide. And ready for 22. And change. No rhythm. That's nice rhythm. <laughs> and if we're nice and loose and relaxed, we can apply good pressure through the stroke. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nice rhythm. Staying loose on recovery. And you can pump it away now on that low rate. Plenty of power, but plenty of relaxation. We're getting ready to change to 24. They're looking for the rhythm. And change. Now that you have the rhythm, just hold it. That's it. And push and run. Nice rhythm. That's it. Connected with the foot stretcher. All the time. Nice and loose with the upper body. Loose shoulders. We're looking at the rhythm now as we begin to change. Get ready. Twenty six, change. That's it. Nice rhythm. Hands moving. Thank <laughs> you. 
गुड मैडम That's nice. Willem, what's going on? On the leg. Coming up to the last minute. Twenty eight, change. They don't snake it. Nice rhythm. I'm wind out. Well done. Keep moving. Just remember when the rates go up, we bring that rhythm into it. We don't try and flake it by working too hard. Get the rhythm first, and then apply the pressure when you're up there. Make sure you get the drink now in between the sessions, in between the pieces. And we're already into the last piece. Now on the last piece, stay nice and loose. Just check, check yourself as you're going along. How are my shoulders? Are they relaxed? How are my arms? How's my grip? My grip nice and loose.
And again, we're talking about rhythm. Starting low at 20, loads of time to glide forward. Change. Nice and loose. Push and run. Feel the connection at the front. And holding the pressure through the stroke. And accelerate. Accelerate and run. Accelerate and run. Lovely rhythm. Okay, just check that your hands are moving out past your knees before you slide forward. When that weight is on your foot stretcher, just draw you forward. And glide. And glide. We're just seeking a note of how our shoulders are at the catch, nice and loose. Loose grip of the handle. Nice and low. Nice long strokes. Change it to 22. Now. That's it, nice rhythm. And maintain your rhythm. Think about your connection. Lovely loose rhythm, push and run. And glide forward, loose shoulders, and connect with the legs. Think about that connection with the foot structure. 
Lovely rhythm now. Nice and loose. Very relaxed. Now we're getting ready to go to, to go to 24. Getting ready. And change. Nice rhythm. So hold the rhythm. The work will look after itself. That's it. Nice and loose. And smooth. Let's keep that chain nice and level. Now, as we're getting a bit more tired, keep thinking about the technique. Focus on that rhythm. Right with them, that's it. Getting ready to change now to twenty six rhythm. And change. Nice rhythm. That's it. Relax shoulders. In control of it.
maintaining that rhythm. Nice and loose. Getting ready for the last piece. Change. Rhythm of 28. One line down. Well done. Well done, everyone. It's nice and loose on the wind down. Just even on the very light, just try and look for that connection and relaxation. Upper body, shoulders and arms nice and relaxed. All right. Well done, Brendan. If that was a medium pressure session, I'd hate to see one of your hard sessions. <laughs> Guys, it's an um, <laughs> if, if, if you have any questions for Brendan, you can unmute yourselves and ask him or put them into the chat box if you'd like. Um, while you're thinking about any questions, the spot prize winner for tonight uh, young lad there, I think he's a Shandon one piece on fantastic effort to Oscar O'Connor. 
So Oscar, if you'd like to send us on your address and phone number, we'll get a, a spot prize out to you next week. Um, just to say, guys, we've had great participation over the last week in our midterm sessions. We have another session tomorrow afternoon with Claire Lamb. She's on here again this evening, working away hard. It's a core session with Claire tomorrow. So a few of you might like to log on for that. Next week, seeing as we're going well and there's loads of popularity, we're actually going to do another five sessions next week. So we'll have a session every evening next week. We have Kenny MacDonald is actually going to do a kettlebell session on Monday evening. If you don't have kettlebells, you don't need kettlebells. You can get a dumbbell or a large bottle of water, fill it up. It's just resistance training. On Tuesday, we'll have Katie O'Brien, she's our PR2 world medalist. So she'll be on doing a session with us on Tuesday evening. On Wednesday evening, we will have Susan Matter back for Pilates class. Thursday evening, we will have Natalie Long, the high performance team, doing another ERG session. And next Friday, again, Claire is going to do another um, core session with us. So, Brendan, Neve, and Sherlock had just put in a question there saying, How often in a week would you recommend this session? At this time of year, I would probably do it twice a week. Um, it's, it's like in a normal season. So if you were rowing weekends and doing other sorts of training, I would, I would do this twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but I would, on, on one of them, I would keep it at the high rate. I would do 26 for the 12 minutes, 26 to 28 rhythm, you know, 75%. Uh, so one varying rate and one steady at the higher end. Very good. Brendan, just from my own point of view, seeing as I'm pushing on, um, how many sessions a week would you actually do? Is it just those two Tuesday and Thursday sessions or do you do many sessions a week? Well, it was a long time I was doing hardly any sessions, but uh, we do, I do about four a week now. Um, I roll with the, with the guys from Neptune on uh, Tuesday, or Thursday evenings on Wednesdays, or sorry, Tuesdays, or Thursdays and Sundays. And then I'll do my own piece on a Tuesday and Saturday. Yeah, you've just actually answered another same question that Wendy O'Leary has just sent in. And she asked, do you do any core and strength sessions? Um, not really. Um, I do a good bit of flexibility, you know, before and after stretching. And so there's a little bit of core in that. I don't, I, I don't do an awful lot, to be honest. I probably should do more. But I, just, I do a bit before and after. No worries. Thanks very much. Any other questions, guys? No? All right, Brendan, again, thank you very much for that. It was fantastic to see you exercising there, and hopefully we'll have you back in the next week or two for another session. Absolutely. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks, see you again, maybe Thanks, tomorrow Derek. evening. Thanks, Thanks million. Great session. Thanks very much, Brendan. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Brendan. Welcome. Peter, how are you? <laughs> God bless you. You look fit there, Peter. Uh, I don't know about that now, you know, lockdown. Lockdown. Give me, um, I'll give you a buzz later on. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, no worries, guys. I'll end this now, okay? Take care. All right. Good luck. Bye.